Well, we welcome David Kay, the founder of the David and Goliath Project. He joins us from New York and Noah Lindbergh, actor and co-founder of the Jew Hate Database, joining us from Miami. So let's start. Thank you very much for both of you for joining us. I'm going to start, though, with David. And David, the David and Goliath Project, exposing a whole range of issues right now at a very difficult time for Jews around the world. Tell us more. Yes, hi, thanks so much for having us. Um, essentially, we're an incubator of all things Jewish, uh, which out of that initiative, uh, we sparked the Jew Hate database. Uh, you know, for us, it's uh, essentially a mission to not only raise awareness, but create real life consequences, right, for people who proudly espouse their Jew hatred, both online and offline. So let me bring Noah in then and give us an idea of some of the examples of what you are seeing. We see videos going viral on all platforms. Give us an idea of the kinds of incidents that you are dealing with right now. Removing posters from the street it can be um, hate messages online. It can be posts from powerful people, uh, medical doctors that have taken an oath and uh, what they're doing is extremely sickle at best. We're exposing all of them because the truth is that these people in positions of power have been going through so many years and are becoming way too comfortable exposing their hatred towards Jews. So we're saying enough, no more excuses, your actions have consequences. And now they're going to see that. We are no longer willing to say, oh, perhaps they are educated, misinformed. It's 2023. You can't be misinformed. You can't be uneducated. Education is completely free. No more excuses, no more laziness, and grabbing onto propaganda buzzwords. It's time to have accountability for your actions. And David, one of the issues that we in a newsroom and newsrooms around the world are dealing with is the issue around the verifying of facts. A particular example was the hospital that was hit early on in the war. Very soon after that happened, Israel was blamed. But then when the facts were actually unpacked, it was the Palestinian rocket from the PIJ that actually caused the damage and the death toll that had initially been reported was in fact not the case at all. However, not only had some media already gone with the wrong story, but certainly on social media, that message had gone viral. How does an organization like yours get involved in a situation like that, unpacking facts and making sure that fake news doesn't go viral? Absolutely. So with regards to that, essentially what we do is we have so far over the first uh, five days, we've grown to almost 12,000. So a large part of that is actually uh, users sort of uh, follower generated uh, reporting, right? So a lot of the times we'll have essentially someone uh, report such events occurring. Uh, and it's our job basically to go ahead, and verify that information that in fact, this person is spreading misinformation, go ahead, report that. Um, and essentially for us on our page, uh, we go ahead and, you know, really try to emphasize and put people on notice for spreading false information, specifically after the fact, right? Beyond the problem that, you know, most of the media organizations ran with Hamas propaganda, um, what we've seen is uh, essentially people continuously put out false information after the fact that it's already been verified. So those are really the people that we continue to spotlight, go after, and make sure that, you know, we're sort of correcting their false information online. David and Noah, my colleague Guy is here in studio as well, joining our conversation. Guy. David and Noah, hi. Um, you know, I've been uh, speaking to our correspondents uh, on the borders, uh, both in the south and in the north, uh, just yesterday, and uh, wishing both of them to stay safe wherever, wherever they are. At the same time, just yesterday, I spoke to a Jewish student in Canada who is also in fear these days. She is in fear both uh, of expressing what she feels uh, and what she believes in, but also just for her 
uh, on life. And, and, and this is what I want to ask you about. Uh, to what extent is, uh, is this become so difficult for Jews to even be walking around the streets and campuses around the U.S. and Canada these days? Do you want to go first? Absolutely. Oh, please, please, not. Do you want me to go? Okay. First of all, we completely understand that uh, they are afraid. We would like to say that you should not be afraid. That's what they want. If you're scared and you're hiding, they are winning. Don't be afraid. Be out there. Show your Jewish identity. You can't hide it. That's what happened a few decades ago, and we already know the answer. We already know what happened. It's not going to happen. We need to show a united, strong front. Don't hide. You don't need to get into confrontation, but do not hide. This is a really big advice that I'm giving, and uh, if you're in the U.S., and you're in a state that allows it, I would suggest to get armed, get trained, get defense, uh, defense lessons. Oh my God, you have a variety of options. But do not be scared. Get strong, both physically and mentally. We're all in this together. And David, your Absolutely. thoughts? And to echo that statement, you know, I actually have my eldest niece who's a freshman um, at a university in Canada, so uh, that uh, certainly hits close to home for me. But, uh, you know, I would echo Noah's statement, right? It's truly about being confident, not being scared, but also, uh, you know, being wise, right? There's a, a very fine line between being confident and being, um, you know, seeking trouble, so to speak. So we're not encouraging anyone to go ahead and do anything like that that puts them in danger. However, we are encouraging pride. Um, and I would just say as a message to all the students, we have your back and uh, essentially we're building this database to be made available to specific, uh, you know, institutions across the board, whether it's, you know, communities, A for our community, number one. Beyond that, I would say government agencies, as Noah mentioned earlier, whether different medical boards, you know, uh, law boards, things of that nature. So uh, with regards to that, you know, again, we're cataloging a global database. We're not only based in the United States. I mean, a handful of us are in the United States, but we have a global database that we're building. And, you know, we plan to have this be the one-stop shop, a go-to place for all incidents regarding Jew hatred to, again, not only raise awareness, but to create real life consequences that are available to landlords, employers, again, different government agencies to make sure that that, you know, badge of very proud Jew hatred that these people are espousing today stays with them for the rest of their lives. David Kay, live from New York, Noah Lindbergh in Miami. Thank you both so much for speaking to us. Appreciate your time on this breaking news so edition. May I add one more thing if sure. we have time? Very briefly, please. Okay. Sure. Because I'm seeing the I'm seeing the title, and it says anti-Semitism. I'd like to talk about that for 30 seconds. Uh, we believe that anti-Semitism is a really weak word that has aged. It's too PC, not strong enough, and some people are using it against us because they're saying if we're Semites, how come we're anti-Semites? We are choosing today the word Jew hate because it's powerful and it's aggressive at its meaning. So it's really important that we use clear words. We need to all coordinate in order to better communicate and educate. So if any of you, I know you're used to saying anti-Semitism, please use Jew hate or anti-Jew. Yes. Thank you so much. much. Keep up with us, JewHateDB.org. Noah, David, thank you both so much. Appreciate you speaking you so to us.